Hello everyone, I'm Nicole Feiss. I'm an instructor in the philosophy department here at Trent University. Uh, fun fact, I'm also an alumni of the philosophy department here at Trent. I want to ask, when you hear philosophy, what image comes to mind? I'm willing to bet that you imagine someone sitting alone in a room thinking or reading or doing some writing. I think this is a common trope of how we tend to think about philosophy, um, but I want to push back against this picture a little bit. So usually when we think of philosophy, we think of uh, someone doing two things, um, doing thinking or reading or writing individually alone, um, and they're also doing this not thinking about anything that's relevant to our world. Um, so in this video in the Philosophy Fundamentals series, I want to kind of push back against this idea that philosophy um, isn't or can't be engaged with real world issues. So philosophy can and should, I think, engage with things that matter to us in the world. Um, and they can engage with real world ethical dilemmas, um, issues, public policies, and so on. So while there are many different views on what counts as applied philosophy and how we should do applied philosophy, the overall goal of this video will be to give you some general tips on how you might approach using the philosophical skills that you learn in your philosophy classrooms um, and some of the content from those classrooms to think about world issues and issues that are important and relevant to you. So I want to get into how we can actually go about applying philosophy. I want to suggest there are two general ways um, that we can think about using philosophy in an implied or engaged way to talk about issues in the real world. So the first is by using the skills that we learn in philosophy, and the second is by using or revising philosophical concepts, ideas, principles, and arguments. So these two things will very often overlap. But I think it's important to note that even if you aren't a philosophy major, even if you just take a class or two in philosophy, you'll still learn important skills in philosophy classrooms that you can take with you to your other disciplines, your major, um, and real life situations. So let's break down each of these in more detail. So the first, let's brainstorm some skills that philosophy gives us. So some skills that we learn in philosophy include asking thoughtful questions, developing rigorous arguments, clarifying complex ideas and concepts, careful and charitable reading, considering and responding to objections, among many others. And you can take a look at some of the other videos in the Philosophy Fundamental series to learn more about some of these and other skills in philosophy. So in thinking about real world issues in philosophy, as I mentioned, our goal is to address a given situation. Or we might want to argue that some concept or idea is misunderstood in the real world. And so we can give an argument for how we should understand it in another kind of way. That's doing philosophy. So I want to consider how these skills that we learn in philosophy can actually help us talk about real world issues and cases. So asking thoughtful questions is a philosophical skill that allows us to challenge assumptions um, about particular issues and cases. It allows us to ask and care about what the right thing to do is. It also allows us to consider whether there are other alternative answers to a problem. Developing rigorous arguments will prove useful for answering and defending our own answers about certain questions that are important to us. The skill of clarifying complex ideas is also useful insofar as it helps us to clarify what exactly is important when we're wanting to talk about an issue that's important to us. 
And careful and charitable reading is important because when we're doing applied philosophy or when we're thinking about real world issues, often we need to engage with other kinds of disciplines as well. And so it's important to be able to read information from other areas, um, but do that charitably and in a way, and use that information in a way that can help us develop our arguments and ideas. So I want to suggest that there are two broad approaches to doing applied philosophy. One is a kind of top-down approach and the other is a bottom-up approach. So the top-down approach begins with philosophical ideas, concepts, principles, and theories, and uses those as tools to generate concrete guidance about what we should do in the world. We should note, however, that this a kind of approach to doing applied philosophy has been criticized. This is a kind of meta-philosophical discussion that philosophers talk about when we're talking about how we should do applied philosophy. And it's been criticized for a few reasons. Um, I won't go into detail describing those here. Um, but nonetheless, this is an approach that is used by some very famous philosophers, including, for example, Peter Singer. So let's turn to look at the bottom-up approach to doing applied philosophy. This approach begins with a real-world problem or situation or case. Um, and in this approach, the philosopher acquires an informed appreciation of that specific case and its circumstances and context. And they develop a relevant philosophical understanding or judgment or evaluation of that case. So in the bottom-up approach, the philosopher isn't just simply applying general concepts or principles, but instead generates an argument and comes to some conclusion about a case based on their understanding of the details and the context of that case and cases similar to it. So in this kind of approach, we would use our philosophical judgment and our, our skills that we learn in philosophy, as I mentioned, to develop arguments about what the best thing to do is in this situation we're concerned about, or what the best answer is to a given real world problem. So such judgments and arguments might be defeasible, which uh, just means that they might not hold universally, which is a uh, criticism made against the top-down approach. This is because um, the ethical, or sorry, this is because the philosophical analysis that we give in a bottom-up approach is dependent on the situation that we're interested in. Another thing that might be worth mentioning here is that we can also use real world cases to actually reflect on and revise some of our philosophical concepts, ideas, and arguments. We might ask what a case study tells us about things like justice or right or wrong and so on. So now I want to give you some general tips on how to do applied philosophy. So first, you might want to determine what kind of approach you want to use. So we talked about a top-down or a bottom-up approach. In longer research assignments, you might have to give some justification for why you're using a given approach, or maybe your instructors will require you to use one approach or the other. Ultimately, what you do in applied philosophy is make some kind of argument. That's really what we do in philosophy, and that's what we do when we're talking about real world issues as well. And there are different ways to do that, so you can think about which kind of approach you want to use. So another suggestion is to identify the issues involved and, surround, and the surrounding contextual details of a case. So you need to familiarize yourself with the particular details of a case um, and some of the major issues that you think it kind of brings out. So for example, you might try to brainstorm when considering a case or an issue what some of the main philosophical issues are. So here you should try to articulate the problem that you think the case raises for us. See if you can do that in a sentence or two. Try to be very concise when doing this. So identify and explain what the relevant facts are when you do this. Um, and this will allow you to explain why this particular case raises an important issue. 
Another suggestion is to identify some assumptions, arguments, and values that are relevant to the thing that you're interested in investigating. So you might consider what kinds of values, which are just things that we think are important. Um, what kind of values are at stake in a particular case? So what philosophical concepts or ideas or principles are relevant to thinking about this case? Here again, ask yourself why this case matters and explain why you think it's an important case for us to consider philosophically. Another suggestion is to consider similar cases, historical details, and so on, and make comparisons between cases. Sometimes you can reflect on what you should do in one case by thinking about similar cases. Another suggestion is to construct possible judgments or understandings or evaluations or even solutions to given real-world problems. So one thing you might do is make a list of these possible judgments, evaluations, or solutions. Start to brainstorm and develop your own thoughts. You might think about what are some possible things that we might need to think about when trying to solve this problem. There are often many different ways to approach an issue or a case, so it can be helpful to brainstorm some various possibilities. And once you've done that, once you've created a list of possible judgments, evaluations, or solutions to a real world problem, you should try to develop an argument then that justifies your own perspective on that case. So evaluate the possible answers or solutions to a given real world problem and support your view. Again, philosophy is about making arguments and when we're thinking about real world issues, what we're doing again when we're using our philosophical skills or using philosophical concepts in talking about a case is to develop an argument that defends what we think is the right answer. So here you can evaluate and compare some of the options that you brainstormed, um, but ultimately try to give some reasons that justify your preference for choosing one of those options. And finally, you might consider some possible objections to the argument that you go on to develop and give a response to those objections. So you might also consider possible implications of your argument um, and how your argument might affect other policy issues or other similar cases. So thinking about real world problems, issues, and cases, um, you might want to think about objections to your argument. This is something philosophers do as well, which we'll talk about in a different video in the philosophy fundamentals video series. So take a look at that. Um, but ultimately there, what you're doing is strengthening your argument in giving a response to a particularly strong objection. Here you might also consider some implications of your argument. So for example, you might think about what your argument implies we ought to do in similar cases. You might also think about whether this means that the government should adopt a particular policy approach based on your argument. And finally, you might think about what your argument says um, about the philosophical concepts that you've actually been using. Maybe you want to revise those concepts. Maybe you have, in making an argument about a particular case or real world problem, come to view a philosophical concept or idea in a different way. That's one of the nice things about using philosophy to think about real world problems, is that those real world problems can often say something important about various philosophical concepts. So we've reviewed some of the ways in which philosophy can be used to talk about real world issues, as well as tips on how to do this. But we should note that the methods of applied philosophy, as I mentioned, um, is itself a matter of philosophical debate. I've listed here some resources that you might use to talk about um, and do applied philosophy, but there are other resources available, including your professor and your peers. These people can help you reflect on real world issues that matter to you. 
And the world itself, I think, is a resource that we can use here, because without it, we wouldn't be able to do applied philosophy at all. So think about what you care about in the world, what issues are important to you, and you will find yourself asking philosophical questions about these things, as well as making philosophical arguments about what we should do to address them. So I hope this video has been helpful, um, and I'm looking forward to hearing some of your ideas about how philosophy can be applied to various situations in the world.